Ever since I painted my first galaxy painting, I've been actually wanting to try to do some sort of landscape under a night sky. Um, so today we're going to go ahead and try and do a mountain painting under a night sky. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. If you've watched any of the other videos on this channel, you may already know that I have a, a website, artwithmark.com, where I actually make some step-by-step -step, uh, tutorials in written format. Uh, and I have a slightly different process there that, that I haven't really touched on on this channel so far. Uh, and I was gonna go ahead and create a new blog post on how to paint a mountain with stars just because I've actually never done it before and I wanna figure out how to do it. Um, and I figured why not make a video while I'm doing it. Just in case this is your first time here, I'm Mark. Welcome to the Art With Mark YouTube channel where I'm learning to make, market, and monetize art. And I wanna share everything that I learned with you. So the first thing I do when I'm actually painting a subject instead of an abstract painting, uh, especially if it's something I've never painted before, is I usually go to Pinterest and I create a board of various pictures on that subject. So usually I'll, I'll try and find a collection of pictures and paintings of that subject, do about half and half. So that way I can pull different ideas from each one and try and create something original uh, of that particular subject matter. So if you wanna check out the board that I created for this video, go ahead and check out the link in the description below. I'll put that down there. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we already covered the first step I normally take, uh, take by making a Pinterest board uh, for inspiration. Uh, usually the second step in the way the blog posts have been panning out uh, usually would be to cover my palette and the colors that I'm using for this painting and how I went about deciding which colors I needed to use. Uh, in fact, I mean, I just really do my best to look at, the, at whatever picture I'm using and pull colors out of that and get close to it. Uh, and it really depends on what colors you have on hand as well. So sometimes you might not have all of the variations you might want or need. Uh, and even sometimes when you try to mix your colors together, you may not get the results you want due to various color biases in your paints. So learning all that stuff comes with trial and error, to be honest with you. What you gotta do is just do your best to select the colors that you have available to complete the project you're looking to complete. Oftentimes you'll start with uh, selecting a certain array of colors and maybe somewhere along the way you find that you need another color that you weren't expecting that you would need. So that's basically how I go about doing it. Um, I don't work with limited color palettes as of yet as I don't have the full knowledge of color mixing skills which is you know something that you get as you go now just to kind of comment on what i'm doing here this is actually the next step after choosing your color palette so uh in this step here uh, this is the third step uh, we're just trying to start by painting the background in getting our night sky so i started at the top with mars black and i'm wor working my way inward uh, with our reference picture, you, it's kind of a picture of the Milky Way galaxy above the mountain. So if you've ever seen pictures of the Milky Way, there's usually this, there's usually two bright halves to it and like this dark strip down the center. And so in the picture, you can see on the, both on the left and right half of the picture, there's kind of like this bluish uh, glow and then lower on, lower down, there's a, a green glow. So here I'm working that into the canvas. Uh, and I'm trying to get that soft glow effect through using a bit of watered down paint. Uh, and also one other thing to note here, you see me using my iPad as my reference for my picture and it's off to the right of the canvas right there. One thing to be careful about if you are going to do something like that is when you're working paint off of that right, in this case, the right side of the canvas where the iPad is, careful not to flick paint onto your iPad. <laughs> I've done that before. Luckily, I noticed before it dried and I was able to get it off. But um, anyway, back to the painting. Here I'm working in uh, the orange yellow layer of the clouds that's right above where the mountain line is. Uh, and then I start trying to blend it in with the, uh, the, the, the blackness of space. And again, I, I'm really doing all of these blending techniques. I'm kind of taking my time with each step and making sure I blend it out nice and softly. 
So if you're not sure how to do that yet, my best recommendation towards learning to do that is just do a little bit at a time and use a little bit of water here and there. What I actually like to do is I dip my brush in the water and then I let uh, water drip off the brush by hitting against the side of the con of the water container. And then I'll even sometimes hit my, um, I usually have like a wash rag nearby that I wipe the brush on. But I, I'm not trying to wipe all of the water off. I want to leave that brush wet, a little bit wet, enough so that when I uh, hit the side of my, my palette where the paint is contained, you get a few drops of water coming off into the paint and allowing you to water down the paint just a little bit. You know, you'll know when it's too heavy too, because you'll see there's a few times here where you see right, like right there, you see me put on a little heavy and then I come in and I brush it out further. And sometimes I'll dip, I'll do that technique. I was just describing where I dip the, the paintbrush in the water uh, and I'll leave a little bit of water on it. And I'll come back to the canvas without any extra paint to spread the pigments out further. So that's the one thing you got to think about is, you know, each color you're using, there's certain amount of pigments in the paint and when you want a more transparent glowy effect like what we're going for here you just need to thin out the pigments same thing with a nice smooth finish did I say smooth finish I meant smooth blend so yeah and in, in, in regards to getting a good blend too uh, I am at and to be more specific on the colors I'm using here, I'm using primary blue and light green permanent. And uh, I'm not just watering them down, but I am also uh, mixing them uh, with a bit of that Mars black as well, uh, where needed. So in the areas where uh, the gas starts to, or the glow starts to fade into space, you obviously would want to use, you know, a little bit more black in those areas or have uh, a transitionary value between you know, the brighter blues and the, the darker blues. So just keep that in mind as well. Um, it's all a process. That's why I recommend learning to do a galaxy painting before trying a painting like this, because if you do a few galaxy paintings, you'll start to get the hang of these sorts of techniques. It'll make doing a night sky like this a lot easier. You just gotta take it one small step at a time though. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. And when you mess up, it's all good. You can just paint over it. You'll see later in this video. Uh, I mean, this is another reason why I would say start with something a little more simple, like a galaxy painting. Before doing this is because even though I've got quite a few paintings under the belt at this point, I've never done a mountain painting before. And uh, I mess up a certain technique that I try a couple of times. I, I didn't even honestly get the, the result from that technique I wanted. So I had to end up finishing uh, the mountain with my paintbrushes because I'm a lot better with paintbrushes than I am with a palette knife. But not to spoil the next section here. <laughs> All right, so to finish up this la this step, we're gonna go ahead and add some stars. Now to do this, uh, you want to go ahead and make your paint, your titanium white, uh, paint kind of the consistency of milk or maybe like a slightly thick milk uh, And then you also want to use something with stiff bristles. So in this particular case I'm using a dick blick uh, paintbrush that I got with a set that I bought to review and uh, It's actually really good for this particular uh, Technique or for putting stars on the canvas. Uh, it gives me a lot of control over where they go and uh, I can even can have greater control over the size of the flex, uh, which you can control by uh, how much you water down the paint or how thick you leave it. Um, obviously, you don't want to leave it very thick at all because it won't you won't be able to get this sort of flinging effect. Uh, and then finally, if you don't have a, a paintbrush that has stiff bristles, uh, you can use a toothbrush. An old toothbrush would work just fine for getting a similar result. All right, so now we're moving on to what I believe will be step four in the blog post, where we're just basically filling in the area of the mountains and the mountain line. Now, as I was doing this, I was kind of going back and forth on whether or not I should use just Mars Black. I kept trying to mix it with a little bit of that orange because 
you know, obviously with that sunset in the background there, there's going to be a little bit of an orange tint or an orange hue cast over everything. Um, but I didn't really add that much into it, and it ended up making it look more brown than orange anyway. So I just decided to go ahead and paint it all black. Now that said, if you're working on a similar size canvas, I highly recommend at this point switching to a larger brush. I was using the small brush to get better detail at the top of the mountain. As I worked my way down, I should have switched to a larger brush. It would have gone a lot faster, that's for sure. All right, so now we're moving on to the part of the painting where I just fail epically. Uh, this is where I try to add details onto the mountain using a palette knife. Uh, this is something you often see artists doing when they make a mountain painting. Um, apparently, I had no idea what I was doing. But that's okay. That's what this whole project is all about. Uh, it's about trying to learn this technique. And so here you see, I, you know, I tried it again. I had painted black over what my original attempt was, looked up some uh, tutorials to try and figure out how to do it better. Uh, didn't do enough research before I tried again, and then I forgot to film that next attempt. So you can see here where I did a little bit better on my second attempt, but at this point, I decided it was time to move forward with, uh, with my handy paintbrush and, you know, try and get something that resembles something of a mountain. So, uh, if if you're gonna if you're going to give this project a try, I highly recommend trying to use the palette knife, even if you've never done it before. Even if you get terrible results like I did, I still learned a heck of a lot from those failures. So don't be afraid to give it a shot. You can always paint over with the paintbrush, like what I'm doing right now. Yeah, and speaking of what I'm doing right now, I'm actually working with a smaller flat brush to get finer details. Uh, and as I continue to go through the painting, I work my way down from the larger shapes down to the smaller shapes. So basically right now I'm trying to look at the picture and determine, I'm trying to look at the picture and determine what colors I need where uh, to give this mountain some actual shape and form so it doesn't look like a flat piece of garbage, <laughs> so to speak. And this was actually pretty challenging. It took me a while because I had some uh, some trouble getting the colors right. I, I did a lot of trial and error. Uh, so there's an, ended up being uh, whites, grays, a little bit of the orange, red vivid orange I was using. I, th I think that's what it is. If you want to check out the full list of colors that I used in this painting, they're all listed on the blog post. Uh, so... And if you want to check that out, I'll, I'll make a short link for you. You can go to it at artwithmark.com slash mountains. That's artwithmark.com slash mountains. Okay, so... As we continue to watch me work in some of the details here, uh, I gotta apologize for this shot. It's not very good. <coughs> yeah, I gotta apologize for this shot just because we're both shots really. Uh, I haven't quite mastered the art of video making yet, so hopefully I'll get better in time as, as I make more of these videos. Um, so this one's really kind of hard to see what I'm doing here because my hand is blocking it and on the other angle my head is blocking it so I had bad angles on both sides and then on top of that the way both of these cameras are set up uh, it's hard to really get the like this this is a good angle right here because you can actually see the colors but it's a bad angle because my head's blocking everything and my back's blocking everything anyways uh, when it comes to painting the mountain uh, and getting form and shape into it you want to be thinking about form and shape thinking think about the three-dimensional form of the mountain and the rocks and the details in it that you're trying to get and where where light's going to be hitting some of those rocks and where sides of the mountain are falling into darkness and that'll really help some of that form start to pop out like what we see happening here i don't think i did the greatest job on, on the shape and form of the mountain but i'm somewhat satisfied with the results we end up with That's an understatement. I'm pretty satisfied with how it came out. 
Hey, if you happen to still be watching at this point and you haven't skipped past this part, first off, thank you for watching this video this far. Uh, it would really help me out if you hit that like button. I'd definitely appreciate that. It would uh, certainly help grow the channel. And let me know that you actually like the content and you want to see more content like it. Alright, so now we're going to add in a little bit of the foreground here where there's this sort of this dark hill. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's a hill or another mountain, but it's totally a silhouette of whatever's in front of Mount Rainier, I believe is the mountain that we're making here. And so, adds a little bit more depth to the painting, something in the foreground to uh, kind of bring this painting a little bit more to life. We're just adding up our finishing touches here on the details of the mountain, and then we'll move on to finishing out the sky here in just a minute. At this point, I believe we're into step seven, what would be in, under step seven in the blog post. I usually break down my step-by-steps into eight steps just to keep it simple uh, and to try and try and develop some sort of consistent format to follow. If you do find you're having any trouble capturing the three-dimensional shape and form of the mountain, uh, that's just an indication that you might want to study or practice drawing uh, shape and form specifically. So uh, things like cylinders, spheres, cubes. Uh, there's a great course on Skillshare by Brent Evanstad, I think that's how you say his name, called The Art and Drawing of Science. I haven't made it all the way through it yet, but uh, I'm specifically in the shape and form course, so I've been thinking about that a lot lately which is why I was really kind of dead set on capturing a three-dimensional feel to that mountain. There are, of course, a lot of other great courses online that will help you learn to draw as well. I just like Skillshare because it's cheap, it's accessible, and it has a ton of other stuff you can learn as well. Did I just say as well again three times? I have to admit, the length of this video is just too much. I, I cannot sustain this level of production going forward. I'm going to have to do smaller paintings so that way the video doesn't take nearly as long. Alright, awesome. Now we're finally moving on to the final details of the sky. So I'm starting off here by trying to darken the gap between the two sections of sky that have clusters of stars. Um, and I'm trying to add in a little bit more of the, gl the glowing colors that we see in our reference picture. I'm pretty much using the same techniques that we used in the very beginning to create the sky to begin with. We're just deepening the colors and making the sky a little bit more rich in detail, as that's most of our painting, right? The, the mountain's a cool feature, but the sky is really a really beautiful piece of this picture and this piece as well. So we want to make sure we put a little extra emphasis into it and uh, give it that little e extra oomph. Again, I'm being really careful and deliberate about when and where I place stuff. Uh, and in fact, here in the center, you know, in the picture, you notice a little bit of a purple, purple hue here and there as well which I had a little bit of difficulty incorporating into the painting and getting it to show through, uh, but that is what I was using in the center there. I had a little bit of, of uh, I was using prism violet, mixing it with Mars black to get a very dark purple and try and create a little bit more of a purple coloration to the painting. All right, now here I'm working in a, a lighter, a light blue like light blue permanent mixed with primary blue and of course uh, thinning out the pigments and watering it down. Doing that though because there's going to be a cluster of stars there so I'm trying to give it that bright glow indicating that there's light being emitted through the universe and 
that there's going to be a cluster of stars there. So, once we get done with the glow here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use some paper towels and some tape to kind of cover up the mountain so I can flick a few more stars onto the canvas. You can use paper, paper towels, anything. You can even use all tape if you wanted to. I think that'd be a waste of tape, honestly, but yeah, I'd, I'd recommend maybe a piece of paper or something. You notice me using the sponge a lot more here than I was earlier on in the painting. Uh, it's because I'm trying to really be careful about how I add these colors in here because I don't want to. I don't want to do it too, too heavily. And the times when I have a when I am applying the paint too heavily, I'm coming in with the sponge that's a little bit damp. Uh, just the way I do it with the brush, you know, the brush is a little bit damp. It helps spread the pigment. So I'm doing the same thing with the sponge, only the sponge gets a uh, quite a bit more soft, softer of an effect. Man, I'm speaking weird for this. Sorry. Just speaking off the cuff like this. All right, so here I'm working in some more green. I just love the way the, the green glow and the blue glow kind of blended into each other and mixed into each other. So I was really trying to capture that as well. I think you can see why this painting took, took so long with me working in such small details a little bit at a time. Unfortunately for me, that does not work in this line of business. If I'm going to be a successful creator on YouTube, on blogs, on the internet in general, creating brands, I have to release more content than this. I can't be taking nine days to finish a video and put it out. That's just asinine. All right, here we go. This is a good example of what I was referring to before where you just kind of want to tape something over the mountain to cover it up, make sure you're not flinging paint all over the mountains there. And then again, uh, the I was really surprised with the control I had with the Dick Blick flat brush set that I had bought from Dick Blick. Uh, the, the bristles are so stiff, and the fact that I have a different range of sizes to choose from really gives me a lot of control over where those... Uh, flex are going and I did mention earlier uh, to get different size flex I said something about the thinness or the thickness of the paint honestly I think that actually has to do more with uh, how much how, how saturated the brush is when you load it up We made it. We finally made it to the end of another long video. I appreciate you for hanging in there with me and watching this far. Uh, if you got any value out of this video and you want to see more content like it, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. I am going to do my best to keep these videos a little bit shorter, both for my sake and for your sake. So that way we can get more of this content out and help more of you get started on your painting journey. Before you take off, why don't you go ahead and check out this video right here.